white creatures from some other world, and therein lies their appeal. Hallucination, you say, paranoia, no way, free hysteria. Dinosaur builder Claude Bell had a philosophy. People will stop to see something big. These proved to be wise words in the desert town of Cabazon, California. Dinny, as he's known, holds the world's record for large. He's made up of 150 tons of steel, concrete, and plaster, and took 10 years to build. Being larger than life, he's able to accommodate a gift shop inside, just filled with dino souvenirs. Dinny's pal Rex is always smiling, ready for the hundreds of pictures that are taken of him every day. These oversized reptiles have made this a popular stop on Interstate 10 for families and truckers alike. If you were cruising along the Oregon coast and your kid spotted a T-Rex up ahead, there's no question about it, you'd stop. Now this seems the perfect location for a dinosaur park, a lush rainforest full of ferns and moss-covered trees. You expect to encounter something strange at every turn in the path. We asked dinosaur builder E.V. Nelson to tell us why he created prehistoric gardens. A dinosaur park, how did that happen? How did it happen? Yes. Well, it really didn't just happen, it was done deliberately. Why? Well, I want to turn the tourist dollars into something that I could put in my pocket and spend. Why dinosaurs? Why dinosaurs? I had to build something to attract people who were interested in dinosaurs as I was, and I decided to build life-size models in a natural setting, and that's what we have. This one is the Brachiosaurus. He's 86 feet long, 46 feet to the top of the head. Took about two years to construct it. Two years? Yeah, people were crazy. We have about eight and a half tons of steel framing inside. There's about an uh, inch of uh, concrete on the outside of the framework. And that, of course, is where we do the finished modeling. And how do you cover something that big with scales? Use that nasty stuff called hard work. <laughs> we were afraid you'd say that, Evie. What else can we see here? Tell you what you do. You just walk around and talk to the beasties because there's a sign at each one. And the sign will give you the, the basic information. And that's about all you need. You have this dinosaur track. Dinosaur tracks in the ground Dinosaur tracks in the ground To be found by you and me Look, What's that, sweetheart? Turtle. Maybe she's a little young to read the signs. Look! Look at that, Mom! Oh, my God! What is that? Dinosaur tracks. Dinosaur tracks in the ground. Dinosaur tracks in the ground to be found by you and me. Oh, good. She found the turtle. For those interested, it's called an archelon. Kids sure love it here, right, Evie? We have no control over the kids. Fortunately, I wish we did many times. Some of the little monsters can be a real problem. Tramping down the ferns and kicking the paint loose. But Evie's still young at heart. He felt the same way about dinosaurs when he was a kid. I played with them when I was a child about 70 million years ago, give or take a few million. 
Thank you, Evie Nelson, for an enjoyable visit to Prehistoric Gardens. An hour's drive from Branson, Missouri, you'll find the world's largest prehistoric park. Welcome to Dinosaur World in the Ozarks of Arkansas. Here you can take a safari in the safety of your car on two miles of road past more than 100 life-sized replicas. First, stock up on rations at the outfitting post. Hmm, the natives seem friendly enough. As long as you don't forget to pay the entry fee. Proceed with caution. Don't make any quick moves that'll scare the animals. It's too late for this tourist, clutched in Kong's hand. Watch out! Watch out behind you! It's a big kitty with big teeth, and he looks like he hasn't missed any meals. Hey, let's escape across the swinging bridge to the picnic shelter until things calm down. After all that excitement, this is peaceful. This is serene. We're safe from predators here. Or are we? We've escaped to Dinosaur Gardens in Ossinique, Michigan. Ossinique, you know, right down the road from Alpena. There are no expressways in this part of northern Michigan. It's a place you have to search for. They found it. They're not afraid. A field trip to a prehistoric zoo. A lot of young people come through here and are very excited about seeing something uh, in place, life-size that they read about in books. Dinosaur Gardens was a personal vision of a sculptor who imagined this cedar swamp as a dinosaur's environment. Owner Frank McCourt worked with the artist. Paul Domke uh, spent 35 years of his life working from daylight to dusk to build concrete dinosaurs. His message, if there is a message to this park, is that uh, the first chapter of Genesis could be true, and it could be that God created the world in seven days, but they weren't calendar days. They were millions of years. And uh, the whole theme of that is carried through this park, and he also believed that there could be some kind of a master plan uh, that put all this together. The dinosaurs were built by a unique process, by one man working alone. Using a trowel, using a mud box, uh, and using wire to construct these exhibits, which uh, I think is an engineering marvel. Uh, there's no power uh, equipment used to construct any of these, and some of them are 80 feet long. You can imagine how his friends avoided him afraid that Paul might rope them into giving up their weekend to work on his 10-ton Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> Welcome to America's favorite prehistoric park home videos. This segment was sent in by Barbara from Double Tollgate, Virginia. 
We're at Dinosaur Land in Clark County in the historic Shenandoah Valley. The place began as a gift shop and just kept growing. The land is full of prehistoricals and other strange creatures, as well as some fellows we recognize. The epic battle was recently added. It's rated PG-13 for some violent content. Thanks, Barbara, for sending in your video of this very popular tourist destination. Eighty miles north of Houston on Highway 59, you'll discover dinosaurs in the East Texas woods. These few acres of prehistoric fantasy belong to dinosaur dreamers Don and Yvonne Bean. Running a dinosaur park hasn't always been what they expected. We didn't get quite as many people as I thought we would. I didn't know really exactly what to expect because I had never run a business before. It was our first time for anything like that, so we, we had to scratch our heads and figure out what to do from one time to the other. We watched the traffic and thought we had an awful lot of traffic and could pull every other car off of that highway. Well, we got our dinosaur gardens in, and uh, we're real proud of them, but we don't pull in every other car off of the highway. This is Demetrodon. He knows he has very vicious teeth. So he was a meat eater, and he skipped the vegetables and went straight to the meat. We done a lot of library research before we started our garden because I wasn't very wise in the way of dinosaurs, so I had to learn. Stegosaurus. Our roofed lizard, he has the, the fins on his back that kept the big meat eaters from biting his back so bad. And then I guess this one is next because they think he's sweet. She or whatever, the little girls like that one. This is a Lasmosaurus. He was here about 70 million years ago. And, and you know, he's got flippers instead of feet. He lived in the water. These, they got, this year, they've been shunning these. I don't know why. I like that one. Called him carving knife tooth. People break the teeth off. I don't know why they do it. I put those teeth in. Not a very good job. We have a lot of fun with children. We have some that you never get through the garden because they're afraid and you just can't talk them in there. A child's imagination is so much more vivid than ours if they can see these creatures walking down there. A lot of them come sailing back out. They've been caught all the way out to the car ready to leave. I've talked several through that just wouldn't go with their parents at all. And once you get them talked in, then they make trips around there real good. We're going to be here, I guess, until we get too old to walk down here and open the gates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's our plans, anyway. Kids design their own at this dinosaur park. The Jerupa Center in Southern California offers a unique chance to learn about dinosaurs firsthand. And hands can get pretty messy. Like chocolate. These creatures are covered with burlap soaked with glue. New groups come to repair the models and learn more about dinosaurs through the center's nature programs. Every Saturday, the public is invited to join a dinosaur nature walk to search for fossil specimens. These may not be the most accurate dinosaur models ever assembled, but that's hardly important to these junior paleontologists. Their work provides an opportunity for them to be close to the dinosaurs they love. And which one is the most popular? No competition there. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex Hunter. Thrills and kills. Big Bad Rex. 
big bad Rex is on the prowl. He's the biggest, baddest hunter of his day. Big bad Rex, mighty king of beasts and fowl. And if you see him, better keep out of his way. He's scarier than all the other dinosaurs, and I like scary stuff. When this dinosaur...